Beckman Unleashed, podcast number 48. We are live. I don't know a football player's number with 48. It would be a fullback, possibly a safety. Dave Stewart, Oakland A's, pitcher, correct? Da yeah, correct. And had a has a weirdly high voice. Yes. Yeah, well, like oddly high. And is a personal friend of mine. Ah, name dropping. I When I say friend, I mean, I use that term loosely. Yeah. Um, I sometimes say like I've trained professional baseball players and football players and I'll be like, oh yeah, that's, that's a friend of mine. <laughs> yeah. But you know, so, I've been to his house a couple thing. times to train his dog. Uh, all right. Uh, I got an email from a behavioral neuroscience scientist who challenged me on some of my behavioral terms, which I took very personally. Just kidding. But I did, uh, uh but you were it. wrong, right? No, I don't think I was wrong and we're going to read it. Okay. But maybe I'm wrong. But um, if I was wrong, it's because I'm trying to put things in layperson's terms, which is very valuable. What did Einstein say? If you can't explain something sort of complex to the an average person, then like you're doing it wrong. So I, uh, I'm not going to explain things in neuroscientist terms to people on YouTube or my clients. But first, I want to say, I was thinking about this today. I was going to make a whole video on it. And then I decided to do it for the pod. And that is that... Good, complex dog training should be ugly. It should not be a pretty thing that you watch. It is always ugly. All the time. It is not... Sit is not ugly. Sit is not complex. Down is not ugly. Down is not complex. Fixing aggression is... There's going to be ugly parts to it if you see the whole process. By ugly, I mean you're going to look at it and go, Oh, wow. Like, that just... That... There was a blow up there. And then, oh, that trainer s yelled to try to snap the dog out of it. Joel yelled, I guess this isn't what I'm used to on the internet. Like that's not dog training. It's not all pretty. That's what they do. It's not all pretty. How about training a recall within a reasonable period of time, not spending four years on a perfect recall, but within a year getting a perfect recall, perfect recall being on a hike, chasing a deer, your dog comes to you at a dog park, playing with his best friend. And your dog comes to you at a year old. It's ugly. The process is ugly. There will be a time where you're trouncing through bushes to do the go-get method. If it's not ugly, it's not true for complex things. I worked at SeaWorld. SeaWorld has the best animal trainers in the world. I know of all the animal. I know the elephant trainers. I know the big cat trainers. I know the dog trainers. I know the dolphin trainers. I know the killer whale trainers. Killer whale trainers are the best animal trainers in the world. If you had to just take a category of trainer. It's them. Killer whales are arguably the smartest animals in the world. I watched one of my first sessions. They were training, a senior trainer was training a whale, a young whale to do a front flip. Now, how you train a front flip is, it's. A, I would say it's a complex behavior because you train it. No one knows this probably. I just certainly didn't know when I started working at SeaWorld. You have a long target pole and the whale is just at the water, at the top of the water, and you start you start to train them to follow the target pole and to move their head quickly underwater. You want them to pop down, like pop, to start to train that movement. Because eventually, that's the movement when they eventually come up under uh, out of the water 50 feet away from you. It becomes a distal behavior. So you have to fade out all that target pole and the food and get the behavior distal. They jump out of the water and they have to drop their head and they have to flip in the air and drop into the water. Well, you can't train it out there. You got to train it right in front of you. So the person's going like this and trying to train this little whale and the whale doesn't understand what's going on. And it was the whale's thrashing around. And I'm like, these are the best trainers in the world. And this looks ugly. Hmm. And I was like, that was my first. And then I've trained behaviors and I'm doing the go get method and I'm going, well, should I just be doing with his treats or I'm doing aggression and dogs are around the aggressive dog or the reactive dog. And there's moments where I'm like, hey, knock it off. And I'm grabbing the dog. And then people comment and they go, they go, oh, that's not dog training. No, no, no. That's exactly what dog training is. It is not a pretty and always pretty process. I like it, that voice you do too. You're like, oh, <laughs> that's what they are. You like make fun of They're like, your haters. Yeah. They're like, I look, I watched this other dog trainer and it was this smooth. It, yeah, because he's not showing you everything or it's taking or the dog didn't actually do the right behavior at the end. The person got nowhere with it. It's ugly. Sits and downs and stays with no, nothing in your house should be ugly. 
because everything in your house is easy. Yeah. I mean, everything that is beautiful was once ugly, right? I mean, is that a, a term? term? Did you just, just made did, it up? But what, I mean, that, I'm just saying, like, think about it's very good. anything that you did, like you create a product of some sort, right? It takes like a thousand iterations of like improving and, great like, customer feedback and stuff. You know, it, like even the iPhone, like the iPhone is how many iterations have there been of the iPhone? It's been, it's not the same thing. It's came yeah, out like it was this or junky, thick, little, tiny. They're little, awesome. Tiny thing. Yeah, they're cool. And they were nice at the beginning, but that's an iPhone. But like for the most part, yeah, it's much more beautiful now. It's much better now. And it started beautiful. Yeah. And the software's evolved over yeah, and over. Slow. They have complaints all the time. Right. Yeah. So it's a it, good point. It takes, it, you, it, you don't get from here to there just yeah, why willy would, nilly. Why would dog training be any different? Dog training's immensely, I don't want to say more difficult than an iPhone. It's more difficult than 99% per, percent of things in life, training your dog, especially really? fear to train a to train a a not a, a, an aggressive dog to not be aggressive you will never it, it would be hard to go through another process in your life that would be much more difficult than that fixing a marriage a broken marriage would be very difficult it takes time right what about a child who who has a drug problem what about right what, what these about things humans? That's, could you train an aggressive human to not be aggressive how about training an aggressive human could you, could you do that? I think you could probably do it better than the prison system does it. But you could, you could probably do it, right? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I, I try to stay away it. from aggressive humans. I have three kids. I stay away from aggressive. I wouldn't jump in the water with a killer whale. Now, someone asked me that the other day. I was like, hell no. Yeah, but you, you jump in in a fight with an aggressive, yeah, homeless guy. Yeah, that's true. He's not a killer whale. Killer whales will kill you. Jason Corey actually messaged me and said i should see what he responded because i said i don't think this was day he messaged me and said will you talk about this on the podcast about a trainer death in tenerife with one of the sea world wells but it was a long time ago it's tenerife it's a island uh well it's a park in uh, the canary islands like a sea world style park yeah something? yeah they have our they have the whales there um let's see if you go back to me um yeah he said let me see what he said oh yeah he did I thought it was new. Okay, so he messaged me and said a trainer died out there. And I was like, I think that's from 2009. And then I'm not going to read his whole message. But um, no, um, it's new. It's 15 years old. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of. I could talk about it, but it's a little bit old. Um, Yeah, that was bad. But what it was, the killer whale, though, that attacked? It was a SeaWorld killer whale killed a trainer in Tenerife. We leased them the whales from SeaWorld, and then it was the first uh, death in a long time and then don's death my friend in orlando that was shortly after actually like six months after that maybe three months it happened very quickly and then everything changed um after don's death but yeah um trainer died there well took him down so it's not as safe as it appears yeah swimming with killer whales is is a dangerous job for sure do you That's ever forget do. that you used to be that guy like, do you ever just wake up and be like, oh, I used to do that? No. People no? bring it up enough yeah. that uh, I don't. But I don't want to get off topic too much. So training is an ugly process. It should be difficult. Training difficult behavior is an ugly process. You'll notice the beautiful videos. Uh, they're generally not training difficult things. They're not training aggression. They're not showing you the process. And aggression is obviously very different from recall. But if you want to train a real recall in a relatively short period of time, you have to, you either have to be training with treats and doing all the approximations of in the house, then in the backyard, then in, and then on, on a long line in the backyard and then in the, in the front area. And you have to be approximating things so perfectly, but you eventually have to let them go at that dog park. I mean, you don't, or in that dog field, you don't, you don't have to, but you're also not showing the viewers or showing yourself your perfect recall. You want a perfect recall? There's going to be times where you're trouncing through bushes to grab your dog, to bring them back. So the learned helplessness kicks in. Mm. And like my video where I'm like, I'm going to catch this dog. And I'm, people are like, what is this? Well, this is terrible. And I'm like, yeah, because it's like kind of, uh, it's ugly. The go-get method or no? The go-get method. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that giant video. I like where you went I into it, the water though. That was a good one too. Yeah, but no one watched that video. But the one that they watched was that one where I, I went after the golden and I grabbed him. Oh, yeah. And uh, and uh, the go-get method has aspects of it that are not pretty. 
you you look foolish. I'm also not going to ask YouTube people or clients to tell them that they're not going to become professional dog trainers. And even if they did, the professional dog trainers tend to not show from beginning to end the process of here's your dog learning recall in the house. And then here's your dog at 10 months old doing a perfect dog park recall or chasing a deer and then coming back to you. Why don't they show that in a beautiful video? Because it kind of doesn't exist. Yeah. There's struggles in that process and people should show the struggles. My point is there any complex thing, there is an ugliness aspect to it. Especially as you start new, right? Like if you think about learning a new move, whether it's boxing or jujitsu or Imagine something that. like that. Imagine that. You're absolutely right. Like you start, so you can be you're comfortable. Ugly. You can be comfortable and do what you're already good at and show off and show yeah. how great you are to people. But then someone's like, oh, we're going to start a new game like Butterfly Guard, or maybe you're doing like some combination boxing. Like if you've never it's done hard. a combination, it's going to look you so look like bad. like a moron. Yeah, you look like- You're like stepping here and then punching here. Yeah, you have to handle your footwork. With yeah, your, footwork. It's crazy, right? So you're not able to do that, but it's like what, so any, even a, someone in the UFC, if you're teaching them brand, brand new pathways, they're going to be, they're not going to look good the way they look when you've done the same time, but it's like, what's the point of showing off this really cool one, two or whatever you have that you've done when you're not improving, right? Yeah. It's better to actually continue to push yourself and look ugly Yes, and progress in your life. Yes. And that would be for like a new dog trainer or a client or someone watching my videos on YouTube. I'm saying that in part to you, you're going to be ugly. Okay. The second thing is even the good trainers even good trainers to progress with the dog, there's the, it's going to look ugly because you're trying to progress at, at a rapid rate. You should be having moments where you're failing because that's showing you you're possibly moving too quick. If you're never failing, you're staying in kindergarten too long. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, my dog won't come to me at a dog park. And I don't want to go grab him like Joel did. I just want to give treats. Well, you can't really bring treats into a dog park or you can, but it's not a great idea. So you're just, okay. So just avoid dog parks. I don't care, but you don't have a good recall mm -hmm. or a field. Let's say a field. Well, with other dogs, you don't have a good recall. You can't brag about your recall because it doesn't exist. Recall in your backyard. I care very little about. Yeah. It's a balance. Like so you you're going to be ugly because you're going to, you're going to challenge the dog and you constantly so that you can progress forward. Hence there's ugliness in it, even in with the best dog trainers. Yeah. You have to be in the like frontier, right? Where you're, you're expanding your horizons, yeah. but you're not because like, I've even seen, I had a friend who did this with the, you know, the game Madden, of course, right. The football game. I know. And he would be like, yeah, I'm 16 and oh, and I'm in the playoffs. And I'm like, oh, are you on all Madden? And he's like, oh no, I'm on like rookie or something. I'm like, yeah. Why don't you ratchet up the difficulty a little bit, buddy? Like how many yeah. times are you going to go like undefeated? Like you need to, it's actually more fun when you, it's hard and you win some games and you lose some games, right? Like you got to push yourself. Otherwise it's just stupid. Like, yeah. oh, I'm look how beautiful I am, but it's dog, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So you brought up a lot of other examples. The, the ugliness is the pro there is ugliness in the process. There will never cease to be a sesh, especially something as difficult and dynamic and complex as dog training. So you'll see me and I'm just saying like, oh, me. And no one's ever said ugly, the term ugly. I'm using that term. I'll yell it. I'll go, hey, and I'll yell at a dog to get him out of it. It seems ugly, right? They're like, it's like kind of chaos mm -hmm. at times in my videos. It's it, it's controlled chaos, but it's because I'm not going to stay in, ki in kindergarten with these dogs. You want to stay in kindergarten with these dogs you're going to only get to fifth grade, which makes no sense what I just said, but you know what I'm saying? You're yeah, only no, going to go so progress. far. You've got to, you, you got to make mistakes and then you're going to jump forward and then you're going to stay here and, and then, and then you're just going to, but you want to get up here, bro. It's a, it's a ugly process. And I'm telling you the people who get up here, there's ugliness in it and they're either showing it to you or they're not. And I don't mean ugliness like meanness. I mean, ugliness. I mean, I mean that trouncing through bushes to get 
if I did, if I trounced through bushes to go get a dog and then bring them back nicely, they would go, what is this? This isn't dog training. No, no, it's not dog training that you're used to. That's actually what it's But it's not. actually a victory, right? That should be celebrated because you want the guy that's going to go after the dog and do the difficult things to bring the dog back to get that victory or especially with the recall, right? Yeah. You want that. I want that. I mean, you don't want the guy that just only shows the clean stuff, right? You want yeah. the going in and getting the dog no matter what is the value, yes. right? That's how you train yes. the recall. Yes, there. Yes. And and I don't want to get caught up on recall and aggression because there's many other examples. I'm just trying to talk quick to the pod. And so those are the two examples in my head. But I could bring up any process. And there's there's a sort of a seemingly unruliness to the process. The other way to to train something that looks pretty is shaping through approximations, right? You're always impressed when I say that. You sound smart. Th shaping through successive approximations. The process is very difficult for people to learn and it is very slow and you can do it, but most people don't have the time. Most people don't have the skill. Most people don't have the money to call somebody. So there are these hacks. They're not even hacks. There are these other things, my go get method or my, yeah, the dog's, the dog's leash reactive. Well, there's a dog 10 feet away from my dog. Well, what are we going to stay 50 feet away for, for how long? A month, a year? until the dog doesn't react, that time may never come. We need to get the dog, my dog or a dog closer. And then there's going to be a correction and the dog's going to be fighting on the leash for a minute. And I'm going to do the butt touch. And then the dog's going to calm down. It looked ugly, but then it got beautiful because the dog is now eight feet away. And with the other way would be keep the dog 30 feet away forever. And that's not beautiful. That sucks. Yeah. You got to take some losses, right? Like, bro, you got to take an L if everyone wants to be the, the king of the gym, right. And never take a loss, never get beat up, not get cleaned up. You know, the whole everyone gets, gets knocked out. Up. Yeah. That, where do you think everyone gets tuned up in boxing? Like when you get in there, everyone who's new thinks that, Oh, I've got some street fights. And then they get into the gym and they get annihilated and they're like, Oh, Builds character. Yeah. They, they get humbled. And then, but yeah. once you're humbled, Humility's you understand good. where you are from a position. I mean, I think about even, like with chess, like if you were to think about Bobby Fischer, right? Who's considered like, uh, arguably the greatest of all time, but like you see these beautiful games that he does, right? Oh, this is so beautiful. Well, you didn't just start like that, right? So you're seeing the best, the pinnacle of the game, right? Right. But you didn't see him Struggle. by himself when he was seven. Sad. Yeah. Just trying to figure out the board by himself. Like that's what he used to do. Throwing so. stuff all across the room, probably yeah, in probably, frustration. Or yeah, like, losing. High level stuff is like, yeah. I mean, heart, like people lose. And I don't know how, how well you take loss, but I losing, like especially in chess or anything though, it just drives me nuts. And I know some people just are more mature. They can handle it better. But some people really don't like to lose. And some people don't. You know, and like I have a friend who is um, a bit of a mentor and he is so hyper competitive, but that's also why he's incredibly successful in business yeah. because he's, he's, he, he'll do battle over, like you're saying, like you have to do battle over and over and have it be ugly. Sharpen. Yeah. Steel sharpens steel, iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah. That's how you get there. Yeah. 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 So a video game. that's what I was thinking, like driving today and I was going to make my own YouTube video about it and I still might, but I wanted to say it here. It kind of will be a YouTube video. The ugliness of it. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's big picture, broad stuff. And I do 100% believe it. Okay. There could be other leash reactivity, right? That's not aggression. That's, but it's more complicated than recall. It's, 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 it's going to be ugly. You want to see the process? The, the beautiful process doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah. Generally speaking, with a normal human being. It doesn't work to all of our fans out there. Like it's the same thing with like free speech, right? Like the, it's mm. messy, the talking, all this stuff to understand these ideas that come out and like this country, it all, it all seem it is messy, at, messy. The, at the closest level. You see people arguing, yeah. right. But you know, and then even in our own business, right? Like we have discussion and we hash out how things are and it doesn't always look perfect, but it's like, we're trying to uncover what the right, next step is i saw jordan peterson yes he's the expert of this he kind of is he said like a marriage should be like he 
he said like to make a decision like you guys are going to bat like you don't want a wife or a husband who's just going to go okay fine whatever you say yeah. whatever you say and like that's that's hard sometimes but you might arrive at a better conclusion you know a better place at the end you know yeah i mean you have to sort things sort out of. and you need people to your wife should be challenging you and you should be challenging your wife to some for sure right for sure he talks about this a lot no i know he's he so when you were talking about this it was making me think about how he says like you need to carry the load like like if you want a meaningful life you have to you have to take on a ton right and that could be wife kids jobs responsibilities right if you like everyone wants to be on the beach with the corona oh, yeah, I heard and he yeah i mean he says this stuff all the time but like it's true like we think we want just nothing but pleasure and nothing but just sitting on a beach, like watching the waves. Yeah. But really it's fairly empty and it will get old after right, a while. And right. it's a, you do need challenge. Right. And I think even like surfing and things like this, you start to like, that's why for me, I feel like I wouldn't get bored in retirement because I always have all these hobbies. Yeah. But part of it is like, there's, there's so much to get good at. And the first thing you have to do is realize there's so many things that you're not good at and pick something and then just get into the ugly process where you continue to evolve and get yeah. better. And Th think what Jordan Peterson would say about if he understood, which he would, if he thought about it, but probably hasn't thought about the complexity of like changing an aggressive dog to not be aggressive. And imagine if Jordan Peterson, do you think Jordan Peterson would be like, oh yeah, this is, th this is not going to be messy. Like there's zero percent chance Jordan Peterson would be like, "Oh, we're gonna try to get a dog who attacks other dogs with other dogs so that he can be happy in his life." Yeah, this is gonna be smooth sailing, Jordan. No, he know he would go. Wow, I'm. I, this is gonna be messy. I'm. I'm looking forward to seeing it and the messiness of it. We're gonna have him on the podcast. This is a direct call imagine? to you. Join us here. He pre does he go on podcasts with less views than this? I mean, we have a good amount of views. Yeah, I think but so. he really? I think so. He, you think we're bigger than some of the podcasts would, he goes on? He he literally does what you're doing, but with humans. I mean, he's this. Have you emailed he's a psychologist? No. What we should think about. I'm sure he's Jordan watching this. Peterson. Yeah, I'm That'd sure be so funny to have him sit between us, just like be the greatest. He thing would. Ever. He would. He would love it. He might be the number one guest. Really. I think we all have our own. I'm not even that big of a guest. fan, but you you can't not see him. You know, I've been following him for, yeah. I, I don't know anyone that's followed he just, him as long he as takes I have. It, he takes a different there. He's got a different take on things. I feel, I don't want to be like too obnoxious. I'm the Jordan here. Peterson of dog training. People you are said that. No, I feel like I have a yeah. good picker for who is good in what field. And yeah. like, I was telling our friend Greg about it. And I talked about this on the podcast. Like he tells me about him. I'm like, I told you about this four years ago. Like this stuff oh, is Jordan so Peterson. long ago and, yeah. and he's trying to tell me like it's a new thing. But even still with you, like I was like, okay, this guy, he's going to be world-class YouTube. I know it for sure. And I see all these people and I follow their trajectory up. But it's to me, it's obvious because you see somebody that's right. really good. Unique. Also, there's the truth element too, right? Like people that are honest with a themselves and the other. Truth. Yeah, like you're, you're gonna, if you have an honest self-appraisal of who you are and how good you are, then you have that ability to get better versus being totally um, delusional oh. and thinking that your whatever doesn't stink. Right, right. So, yeah, that's kind of the main, the main thing. Is that's the, the main monologue. There was another word that I was going to use, and then I just used ugly. The process is ugly. But it's going to be ugly, or no? No, it's different than ugly. Okay. Like, like me going hey and yelling Messy? at dog. People are like. You yelled at that dog. Yeah, I yelled at that dog. I yelled at my kids three days ago too. Like, you got a problem with that? Like, what's your problem? Like, what What do you think? No one can be yelled at ever? You have kids? You've yelled at your kids. I'm over never, people without never. kids, bro. You're I said this them? I'm over them. You're over people without children? Yes. Except for this Ryan. This getting messy. Except for Ryan. Or Patrick. He doesn't have kids, I don't think. Not that he knows about. I'm. I'm... Yeah, I'm over it. Like, talk to me about life. Talk to me about dog training. This is talk to me about 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 any deep subject that involves sort of time management. Talk to me about frustration. 
this is the cross what? you're gonna die on for sure like i was thinking about this like a couple of days ago i'm like joel is so passionate about this like you have to have kids thing like you do at the detriment of his entire life he's like i don't <laughs> care like i will die on this hill i will i posted that years ago somewhere on facebook and i was like i don't care about, oh i said like you can't be a great dog trainer without kids and it was pretty blunt i admit and maybe i said the perfect dog trainer. i don't know what i said but people are like what and they're like but it's true it's kind it's kind of true like i don't think it i think even for life like there's other things that you really just don't get without kids like there's big chunks of life you just don't understand um you're so abrasive with this topic that like you would probably say that they can't be a good pod listener without kids. No. I, I feel like pod. that's your next thing. You're I don't want to like eliminate anyone from like, listening I love to this these, podcast. I always think about like what the people on the pod think about this. You know, like he's just like saying, you know, who's a great dog trainer and a great person without children. Not Caesar. Jason Corey. He doesn't have kids. No. So I will take that back because he is an example of something d different. So I, 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 I guess I'll take that back to a degree. So you're admitting you're wrong. I'm admitting I'm kind of wrong, but because him and his wife have like this great outlook in this great way. And like, but they're married too. Like, I guess if, you know, if you're like single and you're talking to me about stuff, I'm like, okay, you're not married and you don't have kids. Like, bro, come on, Jason, you should so have, maybe well, I should be, you should have like 10 kids, right? Yeah. Don't have 10 kids. No, I know people with 10 kids. Oh Do yeah. Really? I, oh, for sure. We know someone with 16 kids. 16. Yeah. <laughs> she has 16. Yeah. My dad said there's a guy in Hawaii. It's a bit like 50 much. or 60 kids. Oh, he's just doing it all the time, right? Like, all well, over. no, I think but this it, is it wasn't, one person. It wasn't him. He was one of them. So it was like the generation above. Oh, right. And he was like, yeah, that it was. But yeah, there was like at least nine or plus wives involved in the situation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But the people I know, it's like one married couple. 16? 16. Yeah. Yeah. They just kept on having kids. And they, the what woman was like phenomenal. Like she called, she said this interesting thing. She was like, we want to make Southern California tell me this. She had this really interesting perspective I never, not, never heard. I talked to her on the phone. She's like a homeschool mom, of course, right? How many kids? It's a whole classroom it's, almost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But then the kids start to raise the other kids. Jordan Peterson said mm -hmm. that. Um, she said, when you when you start taking grass out, like, oh, we don't want to water the grass, whatnot, you'll actually turn the area into a desert. So us in Southern California going, you shouldn't have grass, which... The government wants no one to have grass because you got to water the grass. You're actually turning the the. This is a documentary, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, that's where she got it. I think it's called. She says the bugs kiss don't the ground or the kiss right the bugs earth. don't come in, and like you start to turn your environment into a desert. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I think it's called kiss the ground, and oh, it's uh, that's where she got it's it. Probably. Dick uh, or I was uh, what do they call it? Narrated by Woody Harrelson, ah. and essentially it does talk about how the grass and that type of stuff, the greenery, it soaks in the sun rays and it soaks in the heat. Yes. And what happens totally. is, is it like, if you remove the, you know, foliage, is that the right word? I don't know. Yeah. As you remove it, 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 it increases the average temperature, but it also lowers the temperature. So you know how you go to the desert and it's like real cold at night oh, right. and then it gets like really hot. It, you, the day. you get your extremes. Yeah, you get these extremes. So it's actually not good. So it was more. And then uh, I think Cow Whisper or some of our other fans on here would would mention that. And actually one, I think it was him who talked about this. What is it called? Regenerative farming, essentially. Yeah. Where they're well, using. Other thing. But they're using like uh, the difference is that like basically what they talk about in the same documentary is like. They basically like uh, clear all the land and then they just do one thing versus the rotation of it where you kind of let the grass just stay where it is and then the, the cows feed and then they move on and they move on and it just goes in the cycle. Whereas like, yeah, they, it ruins the the farm essentially because yeah. they, they basically strip all the nutrients out of it. So it doesn't yeah. ever come back. So I don't know. How's your coffee, by the way? It's good. Tasty? Um, yeah. Yeah. Gets me all worked up. So 
she also said something about like the bugs coming in. I don't remember. This was years ago. I talked to her. She said like the wrong bugs will come in. Like you get rid of the grass, you get all these different bugs coming in. They almost turn it into a desert. So all these things happen. Well, but doesn't it sound nice? Don't water grass. Oh, we don't have enough water. Don't water grass. No, no, no. It probably is bad. But so would she be a better dog trainer than you having so many kids? No, but she'd be pretty good but she doesn't have the time for it well no remember there was got 16 in kids. california there was a drought and there's never going to be rain ever again and because the yeah. media told me yeah and then yeah all of a sudden it's like flooding everywhere yeah <laughs> the cars so, are getting taken down did, mission valley did you see any more holes being built to catch this rainwater to then use later mm, we'll i didn't no well because it was never going to rain again so well, why would we and so now it's like in two years they'll be like we're in a drought and I'll be like, uh, yeah, what do you do with all that rainwater from two years ago? Like we could have built some things to store it. Nah, it's illegal to do that. No, I don't mean an individual. I mean the government. Isn't that weird though? That like it's illegal for an individual sometimes to capture rainwater. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, yeah, this, that, though, right? that's beyond weird. You know, that's true though, right? I believe that. Yeah. And then like the EPA basically would call like any body of water is like considered like bears yeah so it's like right. so you have like a puddle and they're like hey you just you littered in there that's like is yeah it, you've heard of this or no no but i believe it yeah it's, it's for real but yeah i guess a lot of the people that are um you know off grid or whatever they're not supposed yeah. to be like capturing water and of course why not because they want them to be they want them to be getting the water piped in and the energy and all that type of stuff just like with the solar right like you're like, hey, I'm going to go off grid. And then if you're here, they're like, no, no, you're yeah, not off grid. They're like, you need to pay a bill still. Almost no off grid. But isn't that crazy that you yeah. get solar and they're like, and you're getting, oh, it's totally you're like, weird. I still have to be hooked up to this thing. Oh, yeah. There's no, it's not like the old days, like solar powers your house. You're leasing your roof to the government for a lower rate. I know a lot about it. How do you know this? Two houses, two solar. You have solar? On both houses. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I don't like it. You know, they're doing a. We just use a lot of energy. They're doing a, um, whatever you call it, like a, um, like kind of a earnings test or I forgot what they call it. But basically like if you make too much money, then like you won't get any of the benefits for it. This oh my God. Rolled out. We're in Mexico and it's like, if you wonder why certain countries are, but he was saying, he was saying something about that for Mexico. Mm -hmm. If you wonder why certain countries are, it's hard for them to get ahead. It's energy costs. He goes, you won't believe what I pay in energy costs in Mexico. He's like, it's, it's so unbelievable that, that, and you have to have air conditioning, but they don't a lot of them because they can't afford it. Like mm -hmm. you're going to stay poor yeah. with what these governments are saying are, are with energy costs. Well, and think about like, even you can't in get Canada, ahead. like uh, they were, this person was showing all the expensive stuff in Canada and they were going to like Costco and they were showing how much the meat was. And they're like, to me, they're like, this is $150. This is $180 for these packs. Like this three pack is 75 bucks. Like it's crazy. It's so crazy, bro. It's not good. It's so bad, dude. Yeah. Like something's got to change, right? I oh. mean, that's why we have all these different things we're working on because otherwise we would be drowning. Right. Like it's if true. you just have your own, like, okay, I'm just going to do my private sessions and that's all you do like you yeah. would be in the poorhouse right yeah. now yeah it's like i you am got, in the poor you house got your pri you have your private sessions you've got your calls you've got your youtube you've got the oh well you also have that coaching program oh the beckman coaching program what is it Joel? just did a live with them before this podcast talk to all of them a bunch good. of them what is it though what's beckman coaching become program? a professional dog trainer you get tons of videos we've given them tons of videos and they we were i'm answering their questions they're sending me videos i'm critiquing their videos they are they are i believe we believe on their way to becoming high level make an impact on society change dog training for good level and we believe in it but what if i want to be in the program you know beckman that? ventures at gmail.com tell us why you want to be in the program and if you have any experience with dogs, right? And if you have experience with dogs and, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll tell you if you're in and then it's time to get to work, changing your life and leaving your job and charging a, you know, a little bit of money and, you know, it's pretty cool. I think it's cool. They I'm seem to fun. like it. They're having fun. We're having fun. Yep. 
do you feel like you learn a lot when you're teaching people that like they're you're seeing how they're picking up these these lessons and stuff like the questions that they ask right don't you think when you create a question and you get like four questions about it you're like okay so they're thinking from this point of view I'm not learning. So I'm creating all I did, did the last week. We did, I did a learned helplessness video, flooding video. Uh, we, we talked about helper dog in the program. So I showed him the first video of prints, um, put it being put to work. And I had, I found that video and that was interesting. I, I can't say I'm learning more, but I really am like interested in, I kind of am like, I guess I toot my own horn a little bit where I go, I'm going to sit down and talk about learned helplessness in this 10 minute video. And I literally just spout off learned helplessness for 10 minutes and all the in, in, in intricacies to it. It's kind of like this podcast. You just go off the top. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. No, no, not totally. But to a degree, like I prepare and I talk about learned helplessness and how it applies to the go get method and whatnot. And when it's used and not used, and it's a bad word, but it shouldn't be when you use it right, which is a quarter percent of the dog's life. The only time you say come and the dog doesn't come, then you want learned helplessness to kick in because the dog can run away and get hit by a car. And I'm not going to sit there and train it with treats all day. How and so, but they need to understand the concepts because they're not just going in the world. Uh, the Beckman coaching program, people can go in the world and they can talk to some trainer that went through years of schooling and has a psychology degree and uh, has no clients. And they want to just talk about training with a Beckman coaching program person. And our people are going to know more about the concepts than them. And they're going to be doing it with real dogs. And they're going to be doing it with real dogs. So they have the application down. Two questions. Yeah. Will you put the information in the, the description? description? Yes. yes. Okay. Beckman Ventures at Gmail. The next thing I want to ask you is about learn helplessness. So we, you were kind of alluding to the fact that it's like a little bit of a nasty word. Yes. Can you give me an example of what learned helplessness is in American society? Does it apply? Yeah. I mean, there's prison. What's the definition? Like, what is it? There's two. I read two definitions. I read from my animal training book and then I read through Google. So I might get confused on the two. Um, it is when an organism... I don't think they say that an or an animal or a person is, is repeatedly sort of exposed to an aversive stimuli and they sort of no longer, um, have the, um, they no longer try to like fight against it. Like it's sort of, there's an inevitability to it. Is it like the wives tale about the elephant in the, uh, yeah. The tying it to the it is. stake. Is yes. that basically what it is? Yeah. And there's some prison aspects to it probably. Or there's these animals that will be in a cage and then you let them, the, you remove the bars and the animal just sits there and paces right where they were. Like they never go. Like that's learned helpless. It's, it's not good. It's good but to it's know good about you, it. It's good to understand it. And it's good when you say come for the dog to say, okay, I can go there the happy way and get treats, but I'm going to end up in front of that guy either way. So that's, that's when it's good. That's Who the cares? recall version of learned helplessness is like, yes, I'm going to teach him learned helplessness by no matter what he wants to do, I'm going to bring him back to work. Yeah. And the, a long leash, which force free trainers use there, that's learned helplessness too. Yeah. They don't come, they don't come. You reel them in. Oh, and then you, you take the leash off and the dog's like, Oh, I'll just go back to the person. Now you could say, well, that's just from them not being able to run away and them getting reinforced, them being reinforced when they're back to you. So yes, there is an aspect of that, but there is a learned helplessness aspect to it. And you want that in there. You, we can do it the nice way and the pretty way, but how about we do it the quick way and the dog's no worse for wear? Oh, this is a whole different definition. Oh, well, no, I, I, I just was looking up like this idea because you hear like people talk about institutionalized or whatever. Yeah. Is that kind of like... They've been, let's say if they have been in prison or something like they're such a strict environment that when they can't operate outside of that, once the, you know what I mean? Like they can go, Hey, just go out there and get a job, like get a job, get a wife, get kids. And they're like, well, I've been locked up for my entire life. I don't know. I don't think Does that's learned helplessness. No? I, I sort of that last line is one of the keys to it that nothing they do will change their situation. So there, there has to be that aspect to it, you know? So in psychology, learned helplessness is a state that occurs after a person has experienced a stressful situation repeatedly. 
They believe that they are unable to control or change the situation. So they do not try even when opportunities for change are available. So, but that is a good thing for dogs, right? Because no, it's a good thing for recall, but it's yeah. But I mean, if you have a dog and you want it to do what you're telling it to do, right? Yeah. But you can do it the easy way or the learned helplessness way. You can do it the treat way and the approximation way or the learned helplessness way or both. I'm just saying to do it for one thing only. And that is recall. Prince will come to me and I'll go, come here. And he'll come to me with his head down. Do I, ra- would I rather him come to me, which he does most yeah, of the time, but just happy as can be every time. Yeah. But when he's on the trail of that deer, I don't know if he's going to come back to me happy. Yeah. But can- I do know he's going to come back to me. Maybe not so happy. I'm fine with that. There's no punishment. Then punishment was never used with learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is not about punishment. Learned helplessness is about a state of being where they can't get out of it. That's it. This is kind of interesting right here. It shows learned helplessness, uncontrollable bad events, and leads, it looks like it has an arrow. So like leads to perceived lack of control, which leads to generalized helpless behavior. That's right. That's right. So then you, in a park scenario, you say you've trained, come. You know they heard you when you said it, but they're with their new friend, but you they have to have heard you. And you say, come, and they look at you, the dog, and then they go, nah, and they run away. You've trained the behavior. Now, is it fair to ask it in that situation? Maybe not. Maybe it is. I don't know. you got to figure that out for yourself. Don't ask it if you're not willing to follow up. They go, I, I heard you, but you I don't want to come to you. Okay, you go get them, all right? You are the bad event. Okay. Then you go get them. Then you bring them back. Then they run away. Then they come and you jackpot them with treats, whatever. Then they ignore you. You go get them. They ignore you. You go get them. And you can only get them because they're in a fenced area. Yeah. And then you take away the fence. They're in a field. You say, come. They go, lady's just going to come get me. Last time she she went in the ocean to get me and she trounced over those bushes to get me. I might as well just go to her because this never freaking changes. She'll get me. And now the dog could run away, but it won't. But it is like the, the key word seems to be perceived, right? Perceived a lack of control. Yeah, that, it's not that's, that they don't that, have control. It's that they perceive that they don't, but they have a good reason to. Because if you have someone like Joel who will do this all day, yeah, yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's where the parenting thing comes yeah. in, where it's like, if your pa- if your kids know that you will go get them or whatever yeah. whatever the the training of the day is right? right if they know that my dad doesn't mess around and he will follow me to the edge of the earth given a proper you right. know scenario um and then what do you think about this oh go ahead one last thing learned helplessness you you see sometimes you see that wheelchair right a person who really needs a service dog electric wheelchairs are really heavy and you see that dog next to the wheelchair and the dog's just like this sad walking by the wheelchair that dog is not happy okay but that dog is also probably the best service dog there can possibly be there you you see them they're just walking near the wheelchair all sad that person just needs that dog there is that good for the dog probably not is it good for the person probably wheelchairs, electric wheelchairs are heavy. The dog is on a leash. The dog has probably in its young life said, I want to get out of here. I want to go see that dog. Oh, people pet me and had these high points. Well, learned helplessness kicks in where the dog just can never pull the wheelchair over and nobody ever pets it because it has a do not pet thing on. Mm -hmm. And literally the dog just goes, might as well just follow this. Learned helplessness is used in service dog stuff a lot. You don't want to have this happy, like, go lucky dog is a service dog. Happy go luckiness is not great for high level companion dog stuff. They have a job, right? They need to execute the job. They need to be chill. They need to walk and they need to be there for the person. And they can't be nipping the person and all excited and mouthy. It's like, yeah, it's like, like and they just got to kind of, just kind of give up the fight a little bit. Am I a fan of it? I didn't say I'm a fan of it. I'm saying that's what's happening. Yeah. I mean, what an example in like modern day, right? Would be, Let's say somebody has a job for 20 years where they're, you know, they're doing like a Homer Simpson type job and then they lose their job. Right. And they go and they want to get another job. And it's just like they keep going on job interview. They're like, no, you suck. And they keep going back and back to try to get another job. And eventually like, dude, this is impossible. No matter what I do, I'm never going to be able to get a job. Mm. Screw it. I'm just not going to play this game anymore. That's learned helplessness. Right. I don't know. 
Do you, I've literally never thought about learned helplessness with people, I don't think. See, I always approach everything from people because yeah, I don't I do too train dogs. So I'm like, I didn't think about it in this case. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not great in any way. I mean, I but think it depends for one on one behavior, the age, it's great. Right. I mean, when it comes to kids running in the street, right, you want some degree of like, I have to listen. The, the stakes are so high. I have to listen to this person. Whereas if they're like, no, like this perceived lack of control, no, I have control and I will run out in the street, right? There's some real problems that could come from that. Yeah. What does a force free trainer do when their kid starts to run to the street? I don't know. They go grab their kid and they go, don't ever run the street. <laughs> and the kid starts to cry. They break character. <laughs> what are you, what are you doing? I thought that didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you do because everybody intuitively knows if I make an impression on this kid, it might save this kid's life. The kid might cry, might be stressful. But yet with a dog, you couldn't possibly give a correction when they try to attack another dog. It makes like, no sense. The kid running the street example is actually one of the best examples. It's actually like that show Scar uh, Scared Straight, right? Where oh. it's like they're actually getting like rough and violent to try to like let the kids know like you don't want this life, dude. Yeah. Like even though they're being mean, they're actually being very nice right? because they're way. actually trying to yeah. help the kid and be like, look, like you were trying, like they really are trying to help them. Yeah. You know what oh, I mean? For sure. And so it's funny that it's just, you know, but try to get, try to get through to uh, any different age. It's almost impossible. I know. All right. Let me read this real quick. Behavioral neuroscience perspective. Greetings from a behavioral neuroscientist. I love what you do but have minor issue with some of the terminology you use. I study learning and memory in rats, pigeons, and humans, and think you do an excellent job at sharing behavioral terms, i.e.g. Uh, operant and Pavlovian conditioning to laypersons. However, you constantly misuse the term desensitization when you are referring to habituation. And at this. that point, I was kind of like, yeah, I think I... I think that actually makes sense. Like, I don't really care. Okay. Which well, she cares and that's fine. And I enjoyed this conversation with her because we went back and forth and I was like, okay, yeah, that might be true. I could care less, but let me, let me see if I'm wrong and she's right. And so that's why I emailed her back based on your ex excellent job at training humans and dogs. I knew you were aware of the distinction. Well, while Mostly. I <laughs> don't flatter this guy, while I think using the term desensitization makes it easy for people, for many lay people to understand. I also believe it is important to educate viewers with the correct terminology. It is important to note that habituation and sensitization. She did not say desensitization. Yeah. Sensitization are two distinct learning phenomena and it is important to desensitize something oh it is this is the key it is impossible to desensitize something that has been sensitized that has not been sensitized right no it is important um um it is an impossible to de to desensitize something that has been sensitized so the animal or the person has noticed noticed something she it's kind of like she you cannot it's you they can never desensitize. At that point, it becomes they they habituate to it. They their response lessens to it. She's saying, which I understand what she's saying. Okay. Rather, a reduction in responding due to repeated stimu simulation is referred to as habituation, not, and she every time she says desensitization, she uses quotes. In contrast, sensitization refers to an increase. And I don't even want to read the definition yet because I know you're bringing that up, which you should. Refers to an increase, an increase in responding due to the repeated presentation of a stimuli. You cannot habituate to a sensitized stimulus. The properties of the stimulus and its presentation, i.e., salience and frequency, determine whether an organism will habituate or sensitize to a stimulus. You cannot undo sensitization. I love what you are doing and simply want it to slow the spread of misinformation. It's an interesting choice of words. Yeah, you're um, spreading misinformation. In my field but... and have no negative intentions. And I don't either. Uh, if I do go hard at this lady, which I don't think I will because I don't think she's necessarily wrong. Um, it's just for fun. Again, thank you for all you do. Okay, and uh, help you. Okay. 
and you've helped me with my reactive dog. All right. So here's the way I read that. And I responded with this, although I haven't read my response in a while. Maybe I'll read on here. I don't believe she thinks desensitization is even a word. The way she's using it, and I know I read it fast and I mumbled it. It's almost like desensitization isn't a thing. So I think you should respond right now and say, We're podcast 48, you should watch it. And yeah. And she could chime in. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did take a, I did yeah. take a quick. So quick I peek. did too. Just, I was curious. I'm like, is desensitization not a thing? And so I Googled it, not to say Google's right. There's a definition of it. So it I sounds have, like it's a thing. I have a thing, which I, of course, I have to go to my doctor for this, which is my doctor, Jordan Peterson, for this okay. again. But here's what this is saying on Google. Take that with a grain of salt. It says desensitization is a psychological process by which a response is repeatedly elicited in situations where the action tendency that arises out of emotion proves to be irrelevant. Uh, so what I'm thinking mm. is the way that Dr. Peterson talks about um, basically taking care of like a phobia or some type of fear, right? Is they'll say like, I'm, so they give you like a little of the stimulus of it. Like, yeah. oh, I'm I'm afraid that if I, you right. know, of do elevators. this. Yeah, so they just continue to say like, you know, if I drink coffee, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to die. Right. And so they go, Oh, great. Here's, here's a drop. And they keep increasing the dose or whatever. They keep exposing them to that stimulus okay. until eventually it doesn't okay. elicit that same response. Now that could be so wrong. I, I just, I go off what I hear on YouTube. So I don't know for sure. Yeah. But Not a psychologist. No, no, no. That's the right way to do it. But that doesn't answer her question on what de the difference between desensitization and habituation. So what is the definition of habituation? Because I think, and then my wife has actually had a degree in psychology, so maybe she knows too, but we're not going to call her out here right now. But okay, habituation, the action of habituating or the condition of being, I hate when they do this <laughs> definition, the diminishing of a psychological or emotional response to yeah. a frequently repeated stimulus. Right. That actually sounds more like what Dr. Peterson is saying. And that actually sounds like a fine definition for what I do. Okay, you see a dog from 20 feet away, let's habituate to the dog. When I say desensitize to the dog, I'm just, she, she's acting like it's not a word, desensitization. She's acting like it doesn't exist. So here's what I wrote. I hope you guys are somewhat interested in this. I doubt you are, to be honest with you, but maybe you are. I said, yes, I understand what you're saying. And again, I very much enjoy behavioral questions and conversations. That's what I said to her. And I believe you could be totally correct. But you used two interesting examples. Oh, how did I not? What in did the you world? ruin? I'm this? sharing your information. Is it a longer one? Big bridge. No, there was two. I remember reading. Maybe both of them. she. There. Okay. It, it puts it out of order. Is what happens, bro. But that was her first email. So no, then I maybe I read her second email, and then you didn't and then I responded. Oh my god! Yes, I understand what you're saying. Again, I'm. A, I very much enjoy for question. Okay, I believe you could be correct. But you used two interesting examples. So this is an email from her I did not read. Thunder and a jackhammer. Both traumatic and extremely sensitizing no matter the interval. What about slight wind in the trees that a dog notices? If the dog has never actually looked in the trees or never really noticed noticed it, could it be des desensitization? So I'm basically saying she said there's no such thing as desensitization because in another email she used an animal can habituate to thunder or jackhammers. And I'm like, why is she using these extreme things? I love extreme things. Why is she using the two, the two loudest things in the world? I'm generally in my videos not talking about these extreme things, although a dog 10 feet from a scared dog could be very intense. I'm generally talking about just seeing a thing and desensitizing. She, she weirdly uses extreme so i'm saying what about wind in the trees can you desensitize to that 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 that's my point yeah it I'm, looks like this is sensitization. sensitization so i'm looking up all three maybe desensitization isn't a word who gives a crap about <laughs> I'm just kidding. i mean it's the pod no no desensitization is a word and i think i don't know where everyone if it comes is up with what do you mean of course it's a word she's acting like it's literally not a word Instead of, de there's no such thing. 
the only word to use is habituation. It, desensitization is a topic in psychology. I mean, and it has an overview. Then, then and, how am I not using it correctly if it's a word? Uh, what is it if it's not the way I use it? Um, That's the central question here. I mean, I think the thing is, is sometimes like the, does it even matter with, so this is actually, None of so this, the, why it matters, this is exactly the what matters here is as far as violence in films and television, everyone who's watching this podcast remembers the desensitization as it relates to school shooters and stuff like that, where they play video games over and over and they're shooting in the video game oh. and they desensitize to these, um, hmm. these violent situations. Maybe I'm they're not seeing using it correctly. You could be wrong, bro. But this is what I know about desensitization. And I don't want to say I've habituation. A thousand different things. But to desensitize. So then it, what's weird is like, of course you can desensitize. If you've been sensitized to something, you should be able to be desensitized to it. And it's showing. So it says violence in films and television. Desensitization is another well-documented effect of viewing violence. So I think just the viewing of it will, it will like, so I think it is like as a human, you see violence in your kind of, repulsed or especially in very very gnarly level like a lot of times like someone will see someone get beat up or something they might throw up or something they might have some type of like physical response right but it's like if you saw that every day or you watch ufc of course right it's going to start to so desensitization it's like oh we already read this part desensitization is sometimes used to treat phobias which is what i was saying about um about what's his name God. jordan peterson by gradually and repeatedly presenting the frightening stimulus under non-threatening conditions that's exactly That's what, what you're doing. You're working with a dog Where and it's we? afraid of other dogs. So then you're like, let me give it a nice dog. I know. And then you're like, let me give it a little bit rougher dog. And then let me get Prince. And then let's get, you know, what's that one dog with it starts with the D that you always have in all your videos? I don't know. You don't know the dog? It doesn't matter. Of course it matters. No. Okay. Over time, when desensitization works, the phobic response becomes less and less intense. That's, I mean, I think that's what I'm doing. Yeah, this is exactly what we thought it was, right? Yeah. Habituation makes sense too. I read habituate. the definition. I don't even understand it. Oh. Diminishing of a psychological emotional response to a frequently repeated stimulus. Habituation was leading to a marked drop in arousal level in these subjects. See, that makes sense too. It sounds like the same thing. So she does not like that I say it wrong. You should email Why would she care? She should have her straighten us out. Why would she care? She's a big fan. She might be on the pod, member of the pod. She might be. She might be a part of the coaching program. She emailed that email to tell me this. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's true. funny. The misinformation. It's funny when people like first get into because well, she's, she's, she's a member of the program. Student. I study learning and memory in rats. And so she's kind of like new to something, or maybe not new, but she's like, so and so is using it wrong. Like, I need to, I need to correct the record. In video game talk, we call that a noob. No, oh, but she might not be a noob. Maybe she just, you know, she studies it. I guess maybe I would be the same. Like if I, when I started animal training, I might be like, you're not using that term. Correct. Maybe I was it's like religious people, right? If they first like get into religion, oh, they, they want to shout it from the mountaintops. They want to, uh, what do we call it? Buttonhole you, you know, they want to like <laughs> catch you off guard and be like, Hey, we're going to talk about the Bible for the next, like, and you're like, "Whoa, you were like going to jail two weeks ago. Do you remember the last like, time we talked about buttonholing? <laughs> I forgot we should. It was have. like it was like podcast two, and I never heard the term. And I thought you were bringing something up that was not right for a podcast. Yeah, I love that, that term. That's like my favorite now. Buttonholing something. Buttonholing someone. It's like they won't let you get away from them. But oh. yeah, but you hmm. see, I'm saying like, um, it's like when you learn something new, you always want to like share what you've learned oh, totally. in a way, and, totally. and then it's like. Or, or like maybe you're yeah. like into politics and you're like learning about like politics and arguments. And then you're like, you've got five different examples that you heard like somebody, like some politician say, and then you're just waiting for that argument to come up so you can yeah. just hit people with it. I talked to a, it was a guy now years ago and I just remember this conversation. He was like telling me all his opinions on politics. And then I said something and he goes, there's two senators for every state. Like Yo. he didn't understand like the basic, like fundamental. And I was kind of like, yeah. And he's like, oh, I didn't know that. And I was like, okay, like, I'm not saying you can't have an opinion, but knowing like that there's two senators in a state might be where you start before like having some serious opinion on the subject a little bit. I had a neighbor. Like, you don't even know the basic foundation of 
something. I had a neighbor who was uh, a huge, he got really into Rush Limbaugh, right? And he just listened to it all the time. Oh, yeah. He had like his own like area. We don't walk over there. He's a great guy. But he started, he was like, would just start buttonholing everyone about, oh, about horrible. everything. Like, and this is during Clinton and, and during all the Monica Lewinsky stuff. So like he was passionate about it. But but like my mom and like like they would always just like joke. They're like he like never even voted. Like he just never. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, but hey, I got I love it. You're passionate about something. Yeah, get into Speaking it. Speaking of buttonholing people, bro, I've gone down this like rabbit hole that's kind of scary about like Justin Bieber and like what the music industry possibly did to this kid, bro. It's scary, Damn. bad, horrible stuff. And it like uh, kind of affects me a little bit. Really? Bro, do you oh. even know what the hell? The, here, the whole industry needs to be, I'm not going to say the word. It needs to be, it needs to be gone. We need to, I said three podcasts ago, they should go shut down Nickelodeon. Okay. It, it, the whole thing needs to be, needs to be um, eliminated, bro. And here's here's how we can do it. I think your superpower your superpower should be to not in any way care about celebrities. Like the only way that we will sort of stop sort of this this like ego of these people is to see them in the streets and just go, oh yeah, there's so and so. Like I could give a rat's behind about George Clooney. Like I could. Like if I saw George Clooney, I'd be like, there's George Clooney. And then I'd be like, and my kid or my wife or my kid, I'd be like, no, 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 we're, we're going dude. Like it doesn't matter. Like Taylor Swift, I, it doesn't matter. Like fight against yourself to care about them at all. I yeah, think they, I they live that. off it. Like it should be your superpower. The best thing too is like for me, cause I, I only watch UFC. So like when I do meet somebody who's like a professional baseball player or basketball player, football, whatever, which isn't all the time, but I definitely get exposed to people like that. And they'll be like, oh, hi. They'll be like, I'm this person. And I'll be like, oh, cool. And they'll be like, I'll be like, what do you do? And they'll be like, do you not know who I am? I'll be like, I have no idea who you are. They're like, oh, I'm a professional baseball player. Yeah. I go, oh, yeah. I go, who do you play for? They go, I play for the Padres. I go, oh, cool. They go, you don't watch the Padres? I'm like, never. Yeah. I don't watch that stuff. They're like, yeah. Then they like you, though. Because they're like, this guy does not know who I am or care who I am. Yeah. And I'm not like special or a celebrity. <clears throat> Whereas like everyone, they, I think they feel like someone wants something out of them. Yeah. So it's funny that you brought this whole thing up because I was like going to tell you, I'm like, we should talk about Diddy on this podcast. Bro. Because like I've so jacked out. I've, but you know what? Like there was this video with Ice Cube where he was talking about how Ice he's Cube's not cool. in the, not in the club. Yeah. I don't know if you saw That's that. That's why he's cool. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. He's like, yeah, dude, I'm not doing all this w funky stuff. Yeah. And like, he's got a wife and kids and he's just living his normal life. And, and even when I think Trump and um, Biden, and they were trying to court him for his vote and stuff yeah. like that. And he was like, he's like, what are you guys going to do for my people? Like, I don't care about your talk. Like, where's the actual stuff yeah. you're doing? Like, so he won't like sell out, I don't think. And then Who knows? Um, Usher, they all sell out. Remember Usher? They were talking about this, like Usher went to go yeah. stay with Diddy yeah. and they're come like out different. wrestling and doing all kinds of stuff. And bro, there's like this humiliation uh, um, thing that has to happen for you to reach the upper echelons of these industries. And you just come out, you come out soulless. I think they want you to. Um, it's bad. And my job as a parent is when we live in Southern California, like, like our kids, you know, might be high level and stuff and Instagram and things and people can message and like my job as a parent is to keep my children away from freaking celebrities bro predators bro predators because if you whoa well, and yes but then i'm not saying all certain, celebrities are predators but no 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 the job is to keep them away from predators of all types and and you're going to run into a high percentage of predators in those in those upper level um places but also like the you predators but the, the, there's an allure to there's it the, there's also like the charismatic folks that are more sure. likely to be able to do that so you have to teach your kids the like the logical side of it to like know what to look for so that totally. they're totally taking advantage of totally dude i saw this video and it's just this girl on a podcast like an attractive girl and she's like me and my friend went to this party and she she, she might have said who it was she's like big name rapper like giant and she goes it was this big room 
and all these girls were rush ushered in. And then a guy came up to me and said, you can stay. Your friend's got to go. And I said, no, I'm going to go with my friend. And he goes, trust me, you're going to want to stay. He's going to talk to you. And she goes, no, I'm going to go. And she said, all it was, was a bunch of girls kind of wandering on the room, like waiting for this guy's attention. And I was like, I was like, bro, that's the way the stuff's going down. Like this is, this is such bad stuff and it's happening. And and it's happening to young girls, attractive young girls. And that's what my point of, if you see those people walking down the street, you purposely look at them in a way that says, I don't care about you because that's the only power we have is if that person comes over and looks at the person and that dad or that mom is just looking at them like we don't care about you. That's the little bit of power we have in this world to get through to them because there's no other way, right? We could not buy their albums. We could, we could do all that, right? And there's power in that, but there's another way. And that is so to, funny. to actually go and the energy in the world. So if, if you go, I'm not getting on this Taylor Swift um, train, right? Yeah. Then there might be an energy out there where, where there's just thoughts and feelings circulating around. I know now it's getting weird and I don't know if I totally believe this, but if you just go, I don't care, then maybe there's an energy kind of in the world that is not caring rather than the the frenzied energy of we love Taylor Swift. Yeah. Well, even I don't think even Taylor Swift wants that, right? Because if you she wants it. Like she wants it, but she doesn't she wants want it anything. But I don't know, because I think there's certain people that like they don't they create this image, right? We all know that's not real. Like that's the the thing that you know, Jim Carrey's big on this, but like he created this idea of him, right? But it's not really real. It's like a it's a um caricature yeah it's a caricature of a real person like they're just like everyone else like no one else is everyone else has their strong suits or whatever so what i think is is like they really do like somebody that sees them as who they are which is like a real person and like oh hey you know it's just like you as a dog trainer every time it's like hey what's up joel hey can you answer a question about my dog and you're like can we just eat a carne asada burrito and just talk without like you wanting something from me as a worker rather than or like be entertained or yeah, whatever. The case. I mean, those are two different things. Like I think when you get into this upper echelon of, of these industries, like you, you, all that matters is like this massive, this massive attention and this massive ego, and it needs to be fueled all the time. And I'm not saying on an individual level, those people don't like talking to a normal person. Right, a guy at the bank who doesn't know who they are. I'm not saying that's not good on some level, but I do it's believe the ego needs to be constantly filled and they're so hollow in a way that because that ego, that's why childhood stars, there's a few reasons that it's so bad for you, but like that developing brain just, it can't understand the attention and whatnot. So I just think the anyway. pro- one of the biggest problems is the, is the actual people, like you're saying, the everyday person who does put these people on a pedestal versus saying like, like if Justin Bieber is here, like if you see Justin Bieber walking out on the street right here, which is possible, you know, if you're, if he walks by and you're like, like you're walking your dog or you're with your, like I walk with my daughter, if I saw him and be like, what's up dude? Like, and he's like, Oh, Hey, what's up bro. And then you just walk past and he'd be like, Oh, I was like treated like a normal person. That's what you should do. You know, versus like, I'd say hi to that kid because I feel bad for that kid. So I actually think, I think, you know, he got way too much hate. They kind of treated him in a certain way. And plus what, what the media or not the media, but the paparazzi does to these people is also a different punishment. But so I was thinking about this. Um, so James, what, how do you say his name? James Cav- Cavizel? Cavizel? Yeah. So what was the name of the movie that we talked about last it's, week? Um, Sound of Freedom? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I did not watch it, but I did watch the interview and I sent you a little piece of it, which was, and you probably didn't yeah. watch it, which was, um, I watched J- James Cavizel was talking to Jordan Peterson or Jordan Peterson was talking to him and also talking to the, um, the guy who he plays in that movie. Yeah. Cause that guy's like a Homeland security guy. Yeah. So he does that. So, um, what's f- so funny is that Jim says in that interview, he says, Oh my gosh, like this is the best interview I've ever done in my life like talking to Jordan, like Mm -hmm. these questions are just so amazing, right? Cause they just Mm -hmm. get such crap from the media all the time that Mm -hmm. he was blown away by the questions that Jordan was answering. Then they start talking about some of the stuff that they've seen in a ways and they've had to see it for this movie. Yeah. So 
I did by the end of that, I did know I'm not going to watch that movie because he does do a description and it kind of effed with me a bit, bro. Yeah. Well, there was a description of a scene that is obviously not appropriate. Obviously it's like the most heinous stuff ever. And just the vision of it, like scarred me a bit, bro. Yeah. But, but you might have to sit through it if you are not freaked out enough. If you're not, if you're just, head in the clouds like kids are doing stuff you you probably should or and i probably should but if you're already a little freaked out about it, maybe you don't need to be more freaked just out. the mental, that was my point that's like week. the mental image is like makes you want to like like uh what's the guy that the ufc fighter that we talk about sometimes um god i can't think of his name um i follow him on on he's like been he's a green beret and all this type of stuff uh um, tim kennedy tim kennedy right yeah. like where he's like okay like i'm going we're going at it with these people. Like, right, right. Like right. that, like that's the you type of stuff there. that makes you want well, maybe you to, should get there. Yeah. Well, that's what this guy in this yeah. movie is about is like, he yeah. literally quits his job with Homeland security. He's like, I'm doing this full time. Like I'm yeah. going to stop this. Yeah. And that's like the only thing. Cause you feel so helpless. You're like, this is the only thing yeah. I can do is like take action. Yeah. Right. But it was, yeah. it was very disturbing and it makes me extremely angry. Um, that's a right, white right wing movie though. Do you hear that when that movie came out? Well, they were calling it a right wing movie. Yeah, it's what? Well, you like, wanna, you know what's, this isn't like that's right wing. You know what's so amazing about it though is like um this guy, so Jim Cavizel or whatever, he played um Jesus, obviously, in Passion of the Christ. That's how I think most people know him yeah. from that one. He did another movie and I can't think. Oh, he he played the Count of Monte Cristo. But Mel Gibson, you're gonna tell that. But story. Yeah, 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 about how Mel Gibson's like, you could take the role, like your, your career is going to be over. Yeah. Which I thought was super interesting. But people of character, well, it's tough. It's tough, but you know, your career might be over, but what's bigger in life, you know? Well, yeah. So this, this brings Making me to a change a, to children or having a career. I think it like goes full circle because I think what's interesting about living by principles. One of our friends, Mark says like, what's the point of living by principles? If we only, if we only live by them when it's convenient for us. Right? Yeah. So it's like, obviously it's so true, you know? So, so what I think about though, is why like a, a man that believes in uh God, higher power, whatever, who's about his family and about his principles, he's very dangerous because very. he can't be controlled in the same yeah. way everyone else. If you can take some gold or some, you know, money and you can, bribe people and they'll easily do whatever you want. Like if it's just a matter of enough money, then they have money. They can easily coerce you into doing things. Yes. Whereas like the people right. that have a higher power and are focused on like what is right and wrong, like they're more of a, a danger to the the status quo. Yeah, totally. I know you know, people like that. I thought you were one of them. And I like to think I'm one of them. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, so yeah. So I went down the rabbit hole. Like I think I was sponsored or um off grid dogs kind of like did this, but I started getting into all this stuff with Jim Cavazell and mm. then uh was the other one, this uh Dead Sea Scrolls and all this stuff. Mm. Just going like deep into this stuff. Mm. But it's super interesting though. I know, but it's 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 hard to talk about. What's on a to- dog training podcast? We talked about dogs for a long time and then behavioral principles and then this. But this I did want to talk about this. This is the beauty of it. The Diddy yeah. thing is just come on, bro. How are we not gonna I talk know. about Diddy? I know. You gotta talk about did he, but I can't really even say like my true feelings, you know? Well, my, my thought we is need to take this, this to true underground podcast. Yeah. We are going to do that eventually. Just new channel. Freaking put the podcast on a new channel and just put on rumble or something. And just talk dude about, about stuff you can't say. Yeah. The, the Diddy, there's two things I have to th- say about Diddy. One is that I am careful because it's we don't real, know how it's to. real easy when everyone starts jumping on somebody to just be like oh he's evil whatever you're, abs- you're right they're telling the story that they want to tell right and if we don't trust the media that's true generally we shouldn't trust the media what when do they start you think some- but what what just think outside the box or not outside the box whatever what do you think's going on in the movie and tv upper echelons of these and then how to get to the top well i mean it's at- not good Look at Harvey they Weinstein. only let that's there's many examples of this. It's not good what's going what's going on. And 
Yeah, it was bad. The whole, a lot of it's bad. And there's many of those people out there. And when you get into, you know, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. But I, I mean, but your so then the other side of it, stay in Iowa. Who's the guy? Just live your life. You don't need to be involved in this LA, in the New York stuff, dude. There's, forget all that. Who's dude, the guy? Be happy in Iowa. Who's the rapper who did the song with Ben Shapiro? Who's this guy? Do you know what I'm talking about? He has tattoos all over his face. Blonde guy. I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. Anyways, so he had this thing and he Machine said- Machine Gun Kelly? No, no, mm. no, no. He's an independent artist. His name is like McDonald or something. Who that? No one knows this guy. He's got like millions you. and millions of people. I thought you would know him for sure. He no, did a song with McDonald. He did a song with uh, Ben Shapiro that was like I don't know. the number one song on iTunes, and it was a, it was like really funny. You didn't hear about Ben Shapiro doing his own song. Uh -uh. It was great. It was a rap song. All right. Uh, anyways, so this guy, his name is Tom McDonald. Anyways, this guy Tom McDonald, he said about Diddy, he goes, "Yeah, I really didn't trust him after he killed Tupac or had Tupac killed." And he's like, "So," and then he had this thing it's where true. he talks about the different, like he quotes one of these like rap songs from Diddy where he starts saying this like freaky stuff. And yeah. he's like, Hey bro, he's rapping about it. Yeah. He told you what he was doing. Yeah. And so it's like, how can, we, how can we be? And yeah, he's done a couple of like really weird things like, Oh yeah. So oh, yeah, I don't want to pile on, but, but if it turns out that he's as bad as they say he is. Yeah, bro. A lot of these, these wealthy gatekeepers, like there's humiliation process to get in. And um, then you end up humiliating others. Rather than us talking after this podcast about what we're going to do with this podcast, we should just talk about it now. Like, I think that's what we're doing. Like, what oh. are we going to do? Are we going to just create, like, just start a different channel and then have all that, all this stuff on that podcast? Or do we do like a do separate? Do we really want to like go deeper than this? This is about as deep as I want to go. But how often like, do, you do I really have tongue? that many more like opinions on this? Not I think you really. do. I mean, a little bit more, but not that much more. If this wasn't tied to your keep channel, your keep keep your kids away from the weirdos. The weirdos, bro. That's that's your goal in life. Yeah, it's your only goal. I feel like you have to bite your tongue a lot, though. Me? Yeah, uh, just maybe. because of the channel and you know the amount of subs and, and yeah, maybe you're right. Like you really can't share your true feelings on stuff yeah but it's not that much it's not worth a new channel you know it'd be better to have it like on the website or something like that beckman yeah. stock training not that one the other oh. one should have some people have come another, in there? i don't have another website so the lives the, the one lives. we're doing the program on oh the Be oh, beckman coaching program yeah but no the, it can create a separate area for people that's true oh yeah that's true we could have another like lives for the people that's true we could do that or we'll just keep doing this one and I mean, see how it does. Yeah. I mean, who knows? We've I'm, done 48 of them. I mean, <laughs> some people we, want to talk we about seem to enjoy it. Some people want to talk about Bieber. Some people want to talk about, they come here Diddy. for life advice. And even if they don't, we give it to we them. Give it to them. Come here for dog advice. You don't get that. No. Come here for life advice. It's already get that. How do you, how do you have something like the Diddy thing going on and not talk about it though? That is true. I mean, everyone's talking about the, well, the problem is with me, like I watch these podcasts and I'm like, okay, this is pretty bad, but like, they really aren't saying their true feelings. I mean, I think I've pretty much said my true feelings. Like I'm not in the, I'm not big enough at all. Obviously this podcast isn't big enough. Most of the people you see podcast of, they're kind of in the industry a little bit. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Like the difference between us and everyone else, I think is that not everyone, but a lot of people is like we're not doing the Diddy stuff because of like views. Like somebody who has a YouTube channel that does like whatever whale training or something like that. They're actually like trying to like turn it so that they can like catch the, um, what do you call it? The trend. Mm. We don't do it for that reason. Right. Like, we just want to share what we're saying or like what's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, can I give you a breed of the week? Cause we got in trouble oh. on our last podcast for bait and switch. Yeah. Siberian Husky. Oh yeah, someone asked for that. I think. Uh, well, I put it on the cover, and then we talked about Bull Mastiff, and they were like, "I was waiting for the Siberian Husky," and then I like, did see that. we never, they never did it. They're they're fine. I would never probably get a Husky. I've never thought about it. They're too independent. And I'll do like a recall video, and they're like, 
everyone's like, what about a Siberian Husky? And I'm like, good luck, bro. Like learned helplessness is not a thing that's in their brain. But now, if you wanted a sled fine. dog, right? If you want a sled dog. And that's fine. You can do it another way. The other ways are equally hard. I mean, they're they're just independent dogs. I think guys, they're good like one guy dog. Like you're single, you like to walk and run and get chicks and go to parks. Like have a husky or a malmute or something. They're cool dogs. Um, but they're just so independent. They're generally happy. I've dealt with a lot of aggressive ones. I've dealt with a lot of dominant ones. Dogs react to them. So you walk down the street, dogs are barking at your husky. Um, let me think. Let me think. Breed of the week. What else? Of on Hus Siberian Husky. Um, I don't want to get into their size. Everyone knows their size. Um, their 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 main trait is they're they're independent. They're an independent dog. They're talky. They do, they talk a lot. They got a lot of personality. If you want, if you want an independent dog, if you don't want to, you know, a dog hyper, who listens right? to you, they need exercise, but they don't need more than a German Shepherd pointer, more than a Weinreimer, but they they do. They Our friend exercise. had an apartment and had one. It was rough. Yeah, I think it was a monster. Yeah. Uh, this person was in the coaching program. I won't oh, say who God. it is because of that. It says I'm. Okay. The South African in your coaching program. The That's moment, what I want to read. I Oh, do you want to read it? No. Okay. You're better. I could be wrong, but I'm guessing I'm the only South African in your program. It's so long. Are you going to read the whole thing? No, I'm just going to read. I just thought the beginning was interesting. Good. I wanted to just say something about the state of Borbles in the world today, since I was born and live in the country of origin. Borbel, which translated from Afrikaans means. Africana. It says Afrikaans or whatever. Okay. I don't know. Means a farmer's dog as boar in English means farmer and boar generally translate to large dog. So right. like large right. farmer dog is right. what I was thinking. I thought that was interesting. It's, it's about right. Yeah, it's like three pages, but I'm not going to read that. Then one. he says a whole nother comment that's like three pages long. And thank you for, for commenting. And I'm going to be wrong in the second time in this podcast. He talks about African wild dogs, which we talked about last week. And he says, actually, Joel, they don't get up to as many as you have. The big pack will be 30. And yes, I exaggerated when I said 80. And I kind of knew I was exaggerating at the time. But it was for effect. Um, and then he, I said they're jerks and they run dogs off. And he said they're extremely endangered, which you can still, you know, an animal cannot be, you can dislike the way they function and bully other animals and they can still be endangered. Like, I still kind of believe that. But he said, actually, hyenas will run them off a lot, too. Hmm. which I just have not seen, but he's an, he was an African game warden who had a tremendous amount of knowledge on the subject. So I will defer to him 10 times out of 10 on African. The dude's cruising around in the wild watching. He, he even gave an example. He goes, I once saw, Oh, he goes to your hyena versus any dog. I'll take a hyena over any dog because, and then he gives an example of two lions pulling live, not on a video, where you really see it. he saw it live two lo male lions pulling a hyena apart and the hyena got up and left afterwards and he was just like They're that's built that's another level yeah and and so i'm going to defer to him 10 times out of 10 yeah on just, african behavior dogs don't want to smoke with a hyena bro come on i know dude. it's silly for me to say i mean I don't they get think in there with I a said, lion bro no i know i mean a lion it's not a like lion kills them but i mean how I many i know about how many how many pitbulls are going to want to tangle with a lion? Well, I never. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't think I see the pitbull. Yeah, I mean, but they they say like Ridgebacks, like lion hunting dogs. They're not. Cool story, bro. That's what I said They're about not. that. Yeah. Okay, how People about this just one? like it. Renee McKinnon says, damn, Joel, you've been catching some serious heat over on Instagram recently. What? I'm watching a video of yours on YouTube, and you said to check out your Instagram. Uh, and so he says, with the dominant Malinois in the comments are wild. I don't know if you remember this. Oh. Uh, you handled yourself well and gave so many chances for people to prove uh, to show their proof that never appeared. So you were just going. She's just talking about the IG hate that you get recently, since people don't know you in that platform the same way they know you on YouTube. Yeah. Um, Mango Doby says, "Awesome podcast, dogs, wild animals, movies. Your regular format is so entertaining, and your comments to each other had my husband and I laughing out yeah. loud." That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. Husband and wife watching the podcast. Mango laughing. Do Mango Doby. Thank you. You're going to think this one's hilarious. We talk about P. Diddy. 
we talk about. Yeah, got deep. We got a little deeper than we like. Um, but people got to protect their family and, you know. Here was Nat. Nat Nat said, I was bamboozled. Thought he was going to talk about Huskies finally. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that one. So funny. Uh, who says this? Rico for you says, because Prince is a hybrid of a dog, half dog, half human. Mm. So stable, so adjusted, an extension of Jedi Joel. Amazing. I didn't see that one. You didn't see that one? Um, so glad you like the sign. Oh, Rock and Racing is the guy. So glad you like wow. the sign. Love how well it turned out. Eager to get started with the coaching program. Uh, much love from Denver. What was that noise? Um, and then it says, uh, what a thoughtful gift. Maybe Joel should keep it in his car just in case. Yeah. I could use it like a throwing star. Then he can just like whip it out in the air. That's funny, right? A um, couple more. And then people love that do this us at night thing, man. I like, uh, oh, it was under. I think I hit a nerve where people want to yell that, but they don't. I uh, Is that it? I hope they do. I think it's something that the sweatpants we should make. Do the ish at night sweatpants. Yeah, it'll sell like three like our uh, like our other ones. No, I think we didn't have the right thing. I thought about that because I was like, these guys are out there making shirts and signs. Like we just didn't have the right hook, mm. you know, um, but we don't care about that stuff. What about uh, so I didn't even what understand. if we do a shirt that's exactly like the sign he did Would I write the triangle caution sign? It says do this S at night, but it's on a shirt. Can we not it's, say that? Do we just S copy? Word? We can. People are not going to know what we're talking about. Yeah, they will. <laughs> what if we did a shirt just like his sign on the front? That'd be sick. That's kind of a cool shirt. I think it'd be good. The yeah. question is whether anyone will buy it. It's it's not bad. It's not bad. But will anyone buy it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, five people will buy it. I screenshotted this and then I didn't know it was under duress who said it. It said, since Eric's the money guy, I'd love to hear his opinions on the Federal Reserve Act. Well, of course, we don't have time for this. Too big to fail bailout and the subsequent federal confiscation and sale of small banks to banking giants and also oh. quantitative easing. That's funny. I have a you large opinion on trouble. all that. Here's what I will say is if you're interested in my thoughts on that, just Google uh, Rand Paul or it's not Rand Paul, Ron Paul, and then put the names after all of those and it should give you a pretty good idea. That's a good way to get out of that question. Yeah. He so would, you don't get yourself in trouble. He would probably answer that. Um, Let's see if we got, let's get one or two more. Um, what else we got here? Um, That's it. Then we're old. Uh, I don't know. Okay, here we go. Child of God. At our old farm, shout out, Child of God, by the way. At our old farm, although we didn't hunt, we had trail cameras set up to keep an eye on predators, and we always had a parade of animals going by. Raccoons, deers, bobcats, coyotes, stray cows, and occasionally heron. Heron? Heron. Heron, Heron, egrets, wood ducks. It was always fun to see what would be on the next video. The bobcat footage made us start taking weapons with us whenever we went into the woods. As for the coyotes, we didn't always get footage of them, but we could hear them. Once in a while, they would get close to our birds, and I would stupidly uh, go out with a flashlight and a club and chase them away. The herons? Um, what, no, what, the coyotes is oh, what she's yeah. saying. And then uh, off grid, are awesome. Off grid jumped in and said, um, when I lived on 300 acres in the low country of South Carolina, we had bobcats, alligators, poisonous snakes. But the only reason daddy insisted we carry a gun when in the woods was the wild pigs. Yeah. Which are no joke. It's right here. All right. That's it. That's all she wrote, guys. The very last one. 